Liquid Lunch Live is brought to you by Panzoni Vodka. Hey, welcome back to Liquid Lunch, coming to you live from Midtown Manhattan, the Question Tequila Studios. And uh, on Fridays, I like to pour that Question Tequila right into my little mixing cup here and shake it up, throw out the questions, to mix it up panel, and sit back and have a cocktail. And uh, joining us again to mix it up is Ellis Hennigan on the left, Robert Hornack on the right. And, uh, you know, for years, Trump is saying that we've been getting ripped off by China. I have a background in Wall Street and the markets. I tend to think we have been getting ripped off. Um, now he's talking about tariffs and and it comes back and devalues their money. Uh, where is it at? It's not working. I, I mean, listen, China's all kind of bad stuff. I, you know, copyright, which is an area I care about, they're horrible on. But, but we've made it worse, right? The trade deficit is worse. We're cutting trade. It's hurting our, our farmers and our tech people. And, uh, you know, it does require, frankly, a grown-up, more sophisticated solution than I think our president is capable of exerting. So uh, there was a report yesterday that so far the U.S. Treasury Department has collected $60 billion in excess revenue revenue from the first round of tariffs. And I know Trump turned around and gave the farmers in Iowa a big, you know, publisher's clearinghouse check. Um, but how long can the government subsidize farmers? They can subsidize them as long as they have to. We've been subsidizing farmers in this nation for decades. I know that, but this is on but, top of but look, all the other This subsidies. is a really important fight. I mean, we can't take this lightly. We've been complaining about China for 20 years. No president has come up with even the, yeah. the slightest bit of a solution on how to address it. Finally, Trump has taken him on head on, and the American people generally love it. Yeah, there's a few people that are, are struggling, but they're being bailed out. And look, China's, they're losing millions of jobs in China. They're devaluing their currency. They can't wage this fight forever. Their clock is ticking a lot faster than ours. We have problems, we, we, get, you know, we sneeze. They have problems, they get the flu. You know, Ellis, um, I, we had someone on the other day, and I was talking about how China, um, they believe in these long lines of succession. So they make their plans for like 100 years and 150 years from now. Um, so when, you, when Robert says, well, we can do this for as long as we want, I think they have us outlasted because they're planning for 150 years out, and we seem to keep budgeting for like every four years. You have, you have clearly been reading your Chinese history, yes. <laughs> they'll, take, they'll take 50 years of famine if that's what it takes. Now, listen, we, we've got to be smart. We've got to figure out po a trade policy that is, that is actually fair and has a level playing field. This is just making it worse. I just don't think literally, intellectually, the president is up to it. Well, but Alan, so... In, on, in May, uh, Chuck Schumer tweeted, uh, hang tough on China, Mr. President. Don't back down. Strength is the only way to win with China. So if Chuck Schumer's wrong and the president's wrong, what, what's the well, alternative? I, I, what do we do to get them to stop rip, strength, ripping us off? Strength isn't the problem. Stupidity. First of all, I, I'll tell you, no, I know you guys don't like the Trans-Pacific Partnership, right? I so don't. We we I made, don't want to speak for anybody else. We made else. a regional deal to, you, to leverage the power of those growing economies around China. China, the Koreans and the Vietnamese and the others, and to come up with a plan where we could be central in that negotiation. So we wrapped, we trashed that, we threw that out the window. What that does is it just allows China to romp in the region, and we're out of the game. Well, I let, just don't think that's well, smart. But Robert, let me ask you, right? Yeah. So now the American worker can compete with anyone on, in the world when there's a level playing field. But if that's an it. American company has to spend $15 an hour to employ someone, adhere mm -hmm. to labor regulations, environmental regulations, and pay uh, taxes that in a lot of places are probably a little too high. How can they compete with a company that can pay someone six cents an hour, hire a seven-year-old, uh, cram them in, in triangle shirtwaist style factories, uh, and have that good imported into the country without a tariff? Isn't this, if this continues, aren't we just inviting the exportation of American jobs? Of course we are. And look, the, the, the Chinese are also subsidizing their, their companies. So right. it creates the most unlevel playing field possible. With all that said, we still have the best workforce in the world. We're still managing to compete because we put out better products, more products. But you know, I mean, what John said before was very interesting. He said they have a 100-year plan. Well, Mike Tyson famously said, we have the deeper pockets, we have the better workforce, we have the deeper resources. I'm with Chuck Schumer. Stay strong. I'm yeah. with Chuck Schumer, too. Yeah, you guys agree we're losing now, right? 
No. no. Well, no. I, I, well, I think look right at the now the trade deficit has gotten worse, not better. That's the a trade, worse. The trade deficit worse. is definitely getting getting worse. I'll, I'll give you that. But we talked about this yesterday also. When people, if Americans are going to start getting taxed because consumer goods go up a smidge because of the tariffs, then me and most people, I think I'd I'd rather buy something can, made in America. Can I say something? So, will that help? Can I say something we're not supposed to say? I think that's allowed on this. If show. it's not a curse, yes. Maybe, maybe manufacturing of of, of simple products is not what America is going to going to be the future of. You but, know, you know, maybe so, we should yeah. let them do that, and we'll do the smart But that stuff. has How been that? the bipartisan consensus among our leaders for 25 years. And, exactly. you know, it works great in an economics textbook, but if you're a worker that lost his job in a yeah. factory, and you're now forced to work at Walmart and peddle Chinese goods at really low prices, yeah. it sounds great in an economic textbook, but you lost your job, you're not feeling so great about so, it. You were so eloquent, Frank, just a minute ago, talking about those people making, what was it, six cents an hour? Right. And they're seven years old. I don't want to compete with that. Well, th that neither do I. There are people in the world who want to make six dollars an hour. Do we, I can't compete. I don't do, want to compete. Do we yeah, really I don't think those people over, want to. Do we but, really you know want to turn over it's world a repressive government. To people that pay seven-year-olds six cents no, an hour? No, no, I, 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 I don't I, think I, I say so. we take them on. Well, I can tell you this in our, in our final minute. Um, we know the ice raids yesterday generated a seven, at least seven hundred um, jobs. Um, because they deported a whole bunch of people yesterday. So there's some manufacturing jobs that are coming back to America. Food processing. But food food processing. processing. Do you want your children to work in a chicken plant in Mississippi? No. Because I don't somebody, want work no, in there. But, uh, Somebody's you know, got to. Somebody we got, got somebody. It. We got some really good workers who've been working there. Excellent debate. Very thoughtful conversation. Um, this is a forum where people, all voices are heard. You decide for yourself, but uh, Robert Hornack, Ellis Hennigan, uh, I want to thank you guys for coming in well, on a Friday you. in August and mixing you. it up with us. And uh, I want to thank you for being there like you always are for us. And like I said, today, we're going straight through to 2 o'clock. Howie Carr's not around, so Frankie and I got to fill his big shoes, which we'll do our best at. Elena Servideo Schwinn, medium and sorceress, next.